Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks, and today I'm going to be playing in the Carnarvon Action 10, this beautiful Tier 8 British heavy tank. It's a premium vehicle, although there is a tank almost identical to it inside the tech tree, so if you like the look of what you see with the Carnarvon Action 10, don't fear, you can manage to do just as well in the Tier 8 regular version of this vehicle. So today I'm going to be talking about what happens when the enemy team play like bots and how you can take advantage of it to try and get more from your games. Be it that you're trying to get a lot of experience, maybe you're trying to hunt some ace tankers, or alternatively, maybe you just want to make a filthy load of credits like I was probably trying to achieve in the next couple of games that you're going to see today. All right, so firstly, how can you tell when your enemy team are kind of breaking. That's the that's the real key that you've got to be able to achieve inside World of Tanks. You've got to try and figure out when the enemy are going to start to wilt. And you kind of try and tell me when you think it's going to be in this replay. Because quite often, trying to push your game to the next level is about having that confidence of probably being in that situation a few hundred times and just knowing when you're going to be able to, to push the tempo. Now, it's all about calculated risks. Uh, as you would have seen in the video that I published yesterday on the channel, where I wasn't cherry picking the games, you got to see that we had a, a pretty horrific session yesterday during that video. Uh, it was, I, I'd like to highlight the Progetto 65 game. The Progetto 65 game where I pushed in, it wasn't necessarily a terrible result. I think I got like about 2,000 spotting or 1,500 spotting. And I think I got rid of the EBR and did about a paltry 900 damage in that game. But it's a point of if that is kind of the worst possible result and that happens maybe one in four times, then but the three out of four times you actually get through the situation and then you have something absolutely huge happen that it's probably worth the risk. Now, today in the Carnarvon Action 10, it's going to all be all about using this vehicle's staggering damage per minute. And that's because this vehicle has the third highest damage per minute of any tier 8 heavy tank. Its base damage per minute is 2,338.98. So I guess if we're being pedantic, 2,339 to all intents and purposes. The only two vehicles that have a better damage per minute than this are the regular Carnarvon, and so if you like the look of this gameplay again, you can do this with the Tech Tree variant of this vehicle. And also, believe it or not, I, I think using the 90mm gun or maybe one of the stock 105mm guns on the Tier 8 Czech Heavy Tank, the uh, CS-53. Actually, that's not a Czech heavy tank, sorry, that's a Polish heavy tank. God, I've been seeing so many Czech heavy tanks on the battlefield that it's it's almost easy to forget about the awesome Polish vehicles, even though the 60TP is one of, if not my favorite, tier 10 heavy tanks in the game. And so that actually surprised me. I might actually try and play a few games in the, the 53TP with that 105mm gun, because I had no idea it had more DPM than this, and the DPM on this tank is staggering. So hopefully you're getting to see the... Once I manage to clear out that northern flank, this is where you want to be at the front, and this is where you've just got to take the fight to the enemy team. And maybe maybe the title of the video today is going to be a little bit harsh, saying that they're playing like bots. Maybe it's just a case of them kind of being overwhelmed, maybe having to attack against a, a defense on Siegfried Line, which is a challenge in itself. And the fact that I have this thing min-maxed with a very good crew, and I'm setting the vehicle up with a gun ram events and a premium consumable. And how can they really compete when they've when I've got DPM that's probably about 50% more to them, more than them, and you can kind of just keep going. So you'll notice that I'm always thinking about moving on to the next play. And that's what you have to do if you want to try and maximize your experience and your credits in a game like this. When you've got the enemy routed, you should just keep going. Now I'm not saying drive out in front of someone and give them all of your hit points, but in a scenario like this, where you've been able to figure out, okay, we cleaned off the northern flanks, that means that we can sweep in, then we're going to go back up into the town so we don't get isolated by the field and any vehicles that might be back there and expose our side armor. And then once we've gone through the town, we know that the flanks are secure, and now we can just whiff away our hit points at the end of the game, almost feeling a little bit bad for the tiger in this scenario, although not entirely, and we can just keep grinding. 
and in five minutes of this game, whoa, this is, this is, this is real free-to-play stuff here. I've run out of regular rounds because we've done 5,000 damage in five minutes, and I'm going to fire a high explosive round at the Borask. It pens and does 280 damage, and the one after that does 255 damage. Well, I tell you what, if that is not some free-to-play min-maxing, then I don't know what is. So next, we're going to be moving on into the TS-5. This is a Tier 8 premium American tank destroyer. And unlike the Carnarvon Action 10, where I could say you could go and buy the, the, the regular Carnarvon inside the tech tree and to be all intents and purposes just as good, yeah, I, I really don't think you could buy the T-28 and be as competitive as the TS-5. This vehicle is filthy pay-to-win. I managed to get it for free on my free-to-play account, however, by completing the mission mar marathon for it. And every time that things go a little bit wrong, I go and get in this vehicle once again to just accelerate my progress in mission marathons. I've got this vehicle set up today with a turbo, a gun rammer, and I believe I'm using the enhanced durability module. As you can see, I have 1,620 hit points. So that's more hit points than a tier 8 heavy tank has although I am investing in equipment slots to be able to do it. And I can tell you with 2,823 damage per minute uh, base on this tank before we take into, account the, uh, take into account the gun rammer, brothers in arms, and a premium consumable, this thing is no surprise why it is the best tier 8 tank destroyer in the game with regards to win ratio and also, at least for me, with regards to probably credit income. This tank does well because of its ridiculous armor. Whenever you can take a tank destroyer and play a tank destroyer like a medium or play a tank destroyer like a heavy, you are going to be more influential in your battles. It's why tanks like the Object 268 version 4 have such a good win ratio because it's like having an extra heavy tank on your team. And heavy tanks are more influential than all of the other vehicles in the game with medium tanks just close behind them. That was a bit of a filthy auto-aim shot against the VZ-44, and I didn't really want to hang back here. If you're in a matchup like this, it's about jumping on an opportunity. And I felt that if I could get rid of that T-28 and I could end up in this hold down position and hopefully this IS-22 stops pushing me from behind, then I should be able to just absolutely rip apart this flank. Well, unfortunately for me, the GW Panther is going to slow me down, although momentarily as a quick dab of the five key heals my crew from the disorientating stun effect and we can manage to get our gun back into the game at max capacity and in this kind of a scenario there's not just not really much team the en uh, not much the enemy team can do against us whether they're playing like bots or not um, maybe i'm being a bit sensationalist in the title but it's just more of a case of what a tank like this once you're knowledgeable and once you set the vehicle up correctly and you take the fight to the enemy team is able to achieve and it's really important for any of you out there who are thinking how can you take your game to the next level it's about having the confidence to do things that sometimes look absolutely ridiculous but quite often they're kind of calculated risks now unfortunately for me this GW Panther as they should be doing is absolutely hounding me this game keeping me stunned and stopping me from really being able to let loose but even when i ah, that was actually a really bad shot did you notice how i shot through the gun i believe and also onto the space not space protection sorry the track link on the front of the is3 not a lot of people know that the track links on the front of the is3 actually count as 20 millimeters of extra armor and so i think the armor goes from a uh, 100 or 110 up to about 130 so definitely avoid shooting the track links on that tank You'll notice just how feverish I'm just constantly plowing forwards in a vehicle like this. There's no time to stop and aim in a tank when you're limited with your speed. And as I've been talking about on the channel recently, the turbo has revolutionized all vehicles that go 30 kilometers an hour and lower. I don't think there is a tank in the game that is limited to 30 kilometers an hour that I wouldn't take a turbo on because it's the most important module. If you're able to get forwards into position then you can contest the early scenarios if as well you could go fast towards the latter stage of the battle then you can get to where you need to go to be able to harass your opponents the ts5 with its armor has the luxury of not really needing coated optics or binoculars although you're seeing in this scenario just how bad that makes the view range 
but when you're constantly in the town and when you've got the mobility to be able to put pressure on your opponents to be able to contest them even without view range then who needs those modules and what you're seeing in the game here is just the difference between the enemy ts5 and the way that we're going to play the tank i'm not saying that to be mean to the player i'm saying this to to try and encourage all of you when you play vehicles like this and you can do this also with tanks like the Yag tiger and even the Yag panzer e100 that's sitting in the corner of the map and playing the traditional tank destroyer snipey role is not going to win you the majority of your games in a matchup like this of course if we're engaging against tier 10 tanks I personally would still go into the town, but some players may find that uncomfortable and they would instead want to try and snipe at a decent distance. The way that you can play TDs aggressively can totally change the game into your team's favour and allow you to win battles that otherwise you wouldn't. And also, if you don't really care about winning, it can totally maximise the amount of experience, credits, marks of excellence, everything that you're trying to get on a tank. And the results for the Carnarvon Action 10, this was 2019 base experience. Yeah, I, I think that's enough to be able to get an ace tanker on this vehicle. You could probably take away a quarter, or even a third of that and still be able to achieve it. We made 227,000 credits profit when we're activating a 50% credit boost. And just under one hour later, we have another huge game for the TS5 with 1,767 base experience with a steel wall, a high caliber for the 5,500 damage that we dealt in less than six minutes, and again, 209,000 credits profit with a credit boost and a premium account. Now, of course, I'm not going to try and pretend that what we were able to achieve here would be possible in every single tech tree tank. Yeah, the TS5 is just flat out filthy OP compared to something like a T28. But nevertheless, what I really wanted to highlight with today's video is that one of the main differences between a good player, a great player or an excellent player is that they can perceive when the battle is going to be flat out won earlier and then they can react to the situation to put their vehicle in the positions they need to to be able to get as much as they can from it with whatever your goal is in World of Tanks. And so I'd like to challenge all of you out there who are looking to get more from your game to consider that it's just as important to know when you can push the tempo as it is to know when it's time to strengthen your defenses or to go and reinforce a different location. But be warned, I'm also going to caution you that sometimes you can get it wrong, you can YOLO into a situation and the enemy won't play like bots. They'll surprise you and then they'll make you look like a complete buffoon and then you might even throw the game for your team. So be careful for that as well. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed these two huge games in five minute rounds. If you did, give the video a thumbs up. If you hated it, however, give it a thumbs down. And let me know what are your favorite tanks for running riot through the enemy team. You know, the kind of vehicle that you feel you can try and pursue an epic victory in. I mean, personally for me, it's got to be something like a VZ-55. That beautiful double tap combo recently and the mobility to be able to use it just allows you to get so much when you're running hot. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.